Hey, why not use Cat6 Ethernet cable instead of coax for our receiving antennas? Hey, let's talk about the benefits of doing this. I'm going to show how to build this transimpedance amplifier that I modified to match the 100 ohm Cat6 twisted pair. It can be used for various broadband antennas such as short verticals or low near the ground beverages. I'll also describe how to calculate and wind your own transformers to passively match the impedance of any antenna to the Cat6 and to transform that 100 ohm twisted pair to match the 50 ohms back in the shack. We're talking about Cat5 or Cat6 Ethernet cable just like you've got plugged into your PC or your router. Look, first of all, with the computer and internet explosion, this stuff is ubiquitous and therefore it's mass produced and generally quite affordable. Although buyer beware, you get what you pay for. I'm going to talk a bit more about that regarding copper clad aluminum versus solid copper conductors near the end of this video. Cat 5 or 6 cable is usually four twisted pairs of 23 or 24 gauge copper wire. That's eight conductors. Each Cat 6 twisted pair has a characteristic impedance of about 100 ohms, DC resistance of 7 to 8 ohms per 100 meters, and RF loss of 1.8 dB per 100 meters at 1 megahertz. For comparison, RG6 is about a half dB less at 1.4 dB loss per 100 meters. As an RF feed line, these twisted pairs are really excellent since they are a balanced transmission line, so inherently less susceptible to noise ingress compared to unbalanced coax. These same Cat6 cables running through your house and office towers carry data between computers and are running at somewhere between 20 to 200 megahertz. You know, they can certainly handle our low frequency ham signals. Another plus for Cat6 is we have eight wires to use. With one cable to the antenna, we have multiple balanced feed lines as well as DC control lines for powering amplifiers and switching. For example, at my station I have 18 beverage wires, each using a transimpedance amplifier that needs power and relays for direction switching. I've got over 4,000 feet of RG6 coax in the field, but I also need control lines for the voltages. Using 8 conductor Cat6, I can consolidate all of that into a single cable run and even have multiple antennas on a single Cat cable. Cat6 cable is available with tough UV resistant jackets and some are even gel filled for direct burial applications. I do cover my Cat6 under logs in the field to protect them from animals. Okay, what about connector durability? Look, I do not use the standard RG45 Ethernet cable connectors. In the field, I use a simple crimp lug and a hard bolt connection to each wire. Perhaps this is surprising to some, but I consider this a significant benefit compared to using RG6 coax and F connectors. For 20 years, I've been using RG6 F connectors in the field. Currently, I have about 43 connectors in the field, but in the years past, I've had well over 100. The number one cause of receive antenna problems has been loose, corroded, or poor F connectors in the field. It seems that maybe temperature fluctuations or something causes them to get loose on their own. I personally can't wait to eliminate every single one of these F connectors in the field. All right, so to match the 100 ohm Cat6 pair to the antenna, we can build a passive matching transformer. They're easy to design and build yourself. Guys, you don't need to buy them. Roll your own to suit your needs. In this example, let's match a 500 ohm beverage antenna. I like this online transformer calculator, but there's others out there. I'll put a link to this one in the description below the video. You could get your calculator out too if you wanted and use the square root function, but it's a lot easier to just plug the numbers in. So 500 ohms input, 100 ohms output. We get this 2.2 turns ratio. Well, let's see, it looks like nine turns to four turns will be close. Less wire on the core is easier. For most purposes, the ferrite 2873-000202 binocular core available from Mauser and others at about 75 cents each are a good choice. Buy a bunch of them. You wind nine turns here, four turns here. I use this Teflon wire wrap. It's nice and tough, but you can use whatever you want. 
One turn is the wire passing through and back on the core like this. If you want to test it, put a 500 ohm resistor here and measure the output. Oh look, it's 100 ohms. Perfect. At the shack to match your 50 ohm radio system, well let's see, 100 ohms to 50 ohms. That's a 1.4 turns ratio. So, looks like 5 turns to 7 turns is close. Alright, let's test it. 100 ohms, voila, 50 ohms. Just mount them in a box with connectors or use number 8 stainless steel screws. Consider using these gas discharge tubes to dissipate any lightning to ground. This will save getting those cores blown to pieces if you take a hit. Using this method, you can match anything you want. It's not complicated. Don't fuss about the core material. The binocular uh, ferrite 73 material units are good from medium wave right through most of HF. Now, if you want to add gain to your antenna, I've redesigned the LMH6622 trans impedance amplifier to be used with CAT6. The modification is simple, really just replacing the 75 ohm R4 resistor with a 100 ohm unit. Notice that I'm still using a Murata common mode choke on the CAT twisted pair feed line and the negative 12 volt power lead is isolated with a choke. The common ground plane for the PCB is connected to the ground rod. Both CAT wires on the feed line and the antenna and 12 volt power line are protected with gas discharge tubes to ground to protect against uh, any lightning events. I encourage you to watch my earlier video about these amps where I give some construction tips and I explain how to tame them for different impedance antennas. Below this video I'll include a link to the PCB Gerber file. Just download and save that file and upload the zip file to your preferred PCB manufacturer. This is how I usually manage the cable in the field at my beverage feed points. A few zip ties for strain relief on the cat cable and keep the cut end pointed down to prevent any water ingress. Cover it with a plastic bucket. This summer I'm going to be expanding my RX system to include three more beverage pairs all fed and controlled with CAT6 cable. I plan to make another video this fall describing my broadside combiner and I'll talk about my field installation a little bit more. Alright, buying CAT6 cable can be like solving the Rubik's Cube. Honestly, there's so many choices. So I'm not going to recommend any specific product. In fact, to be honest, I'm still hunting for the best product myself. But here's a little bit of terminology. UTP is unshielded twisted pair. FTP is foil shielded twisted pair. STP is braided shield twisted pair. Here's a sum uh, chart rather that summarizes the basics. It looks like for CAT5 uh, we've got 24 gauge wire and has greater loss at 2 dB per 100 meters on 1 megahertz. Whereas uh, CAT6 has a larger 23 gauge wire with 1.8 dB loss per 100 meters and a lower DC resistance of 7 ohms. Seems to me like CAT6 is the way to go. Amazon is loaded with low cost CAT6 cable. However, Many of those, if you look closely, are going to say the conductors are CCA. That's code for copper clad aluminum. Now this stuff may work, but I'm suspicious about the effect of RF loss considering the skin depth on 1.8 megahertz. You know, perhaps it's better to pay the premium for solid copper. My main guidelines when shopping for CAT6 is cable construction and durability. You know, we want a tough jacket that won't get easily nicked or cut if buried or covered by logs in the field. Anyway, hey, maybe build a small 20 foot vertical and feed it with CAT6 connected to one of those TI amplifiers. It's easy with just one run of CAT cable for feed line and power. It's an antenna just like this that I use for my multiband RBN skimmer from 10 meters through to 630 meters. Go experiment with feeding your receive antenna with CAT6. Build some transformers and see how it works for you. You'll really like having those extra conductors available to power the amps or activate switching. 73, this is Steve, V6WZ.